you for coming today. We're excited to have you. I am excited to be here. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Ben Stongroth. Happy to be here. Uh, Going to be talking uh, about Google Photos uh, in this video session today. So really excited about this topic. Google Photos is, I would throw it out there as, uh, I won't like have any hyperbole here. Like, I think it's life changing. Uh, and there's no joke when I say that because it, it takes and it just like transforms everything that we know about taking pictures and makes, uh, makes it that much better. It makes it easier on so many different levels. It makes storing them easier. It makes accessing them easier. Uh, it just brings them and their availability. It makes that easier. It's just an amazing tool. Uh, it, it used to be better uh, until they made a data storage cap on it a couple of months ago, uh, as we sit here in the middle of uh, 2021. But that's okay. We'll talk about all that and, and some of the ways that you can you can maneuver around it. But um, Google Photos is, I mean, no joke, like an amazing tool that is out there, that is free, that is available for everybody to use. And it just makes sense uh, on so many different levels. And so we want to get into that. So today what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at how we can leverage Google Photos, what are the different ways that we can maximize its capabilities, how it's going to help you in your everyday life to, to be able to share pictures, to share videos with your, with your friends, your family, your loved ones, um, and just for yourself as well, and how this process of using Google Photos just makes everything in your world of pictures better. Um, the reason I think I'm also drawn to this is because with smartphones, our photo use and photo capturing is at like an all time high. Like I remember the days pre smartphone when you were just like taking around the camera. That was my college days. It was like snapping photos and then uploading them. And this is with digital cameras. Before that, we had disposables and film and all that stuff. And my mom has totes and totes of four by six pictures just sitting around the house. And they're great right up until you need them and you want to have them readily accessible. Uh, and so what Google Photos does is going to, it just revolutionizes that process. Uh, it, it just makes everything right there at, at the tip of your fingers, on your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, whatever you have. All you need is a Google account to get started. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. And we're going to be looking at a couple of different things here. And now I'll also preface this, preface this with, uh, I'm using my personal Google account here and a lot of my personal photos. I don't care. I'm a very, very open person, um, but you're going to see a lot of pictures of my kid, um, my wife, my friends, and golf uh, courses because that's my hobby. So, um, so just fair warning: a lot of pictures of my son because that's what I take most of my pictures of. <laughs> so, just want to throw it out there for anybody that's watching uh, as a little bit of a precursor to our conversation here today. So, let me go ahead and make sure that is up, and we are in Google Photos here. I'm going to take one minute and bring up something else on my other screen. So that way I have my thing here. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. So when we're talking about Google Photos, we're we're looking at the way that we can bring in our Google account, merge our Google account and pictures together. OK, so the biggest thing that you need to know how to do here to access this is one, you need the mobile app. OK, so you need the mobile app. And if you have an Android phone, you actually already have Google Photos installed. Um, it's it's it comes preloaded on Android phones because Google is the operator of the Android system. Uh, if you have a uh, an iOS phone, an Apple phone, uh, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, what you're going to need to do is go to the App Store and search for Google Photos and then download the app. That's going to then connect to your Google account. Okay. And so you need a Google account. So if you don't have a Google account, you need one of those. So you can go to google.com, sign up for an account, get yourself a Gmail account, and then sign into that account when you are on your phone or when you're on your computer. And when you're on your computer and you're signed in, hopefully you're using Chrome because that's what I prefer. But if you're not, uh, you can go to photos.google.com. And if you are using Chrome and you're signed in, you're gonna be able to go to your app launcher, the, uh, the waffle up in the top right hand corner, scroll down and see photos. And then you'll be able to open that up and that will then open up Google Photos for you as well. So we've got a couple of different ways that we can get to it, okay? You can get to Google Photos through, uh, you know, 
any way you want. It's uh, it's pretty great. So a couple of different ways to get to where you need to be. When you open that up, this is what you'll see or something similar. If you've never opened it up before, you're going to see pictures. Maybe you didn't even know that we're uploading in the background if you've had this app. Um, if and you're using an Android phone, uh, if and this is from the web view, we're going to bring up the phone view. I have an iPhone, so we're going to be using the iPhone view for, for all of the demonstration purposes today, but the apps are like exactly the same. So, you know, you have no reason to kind of maybe a little bit of graphic discourse, but for the most part, exactly the same. Um, ben? Yeah, uh, go ahead. See up in that corner next to the waffle, there's a picture. Um, how would yeah. I know what account maybe, maybe I have two email addresses. How would I know? what is coming from my phone or um, where it's going? Yeah, good question. So what you wanna make sure, and that's really important too, if you have like a work account that you're signed into on your personal device, on your personal phone or, or something like that, you wanna make sure that both in the account that you're in on your computer, that it's gonna be, and this is I think really important too, like it's your personal Gmail account. You don't wanna be uploading your personal photos to your work account. Um, there's a lot of different reasons for that. One, if you leave that job and they terminate that account, you're going to lose all your pictures. That'd be bad. Um, so if you want to make sure if you click on this, you see that your main account here uh, is you. But also if you're in Chrome, it's really more you want to make sure that this account, so this little bubble up here, is signed in as you. That's going to sign you into Chrome, which is then going to sign you into everything else as that person. Okay. So that's really important. On the phone, as I bring up the phone here. What you're going to want to make sure is this this picture here when i tap on that that's going to now show you what account is up at the top and that's going to show you where those photos are going now you can have multiple accounts signed into your phone so for example if i tap that little down you see i have another one there that's called golf photos that's because i upload all the pictures that i take of golf courses when i travel it's super nerdy but i like to take pictures of golf courses i upload them to that account and then I remove like the videos and things like that from my personal account, put them over into that one. And then I like eliminate storage. So that's like a Google photos, like 3.0 almost hack. Um, but <laughs> you can have multiple accounts, but you'll notice that it'll, the first one up here is the one that it'll be defaulting and adding those photos to. So yeah, good question. Uh, you want to make sure that this photo up here is your personal Gmail account in most cases, unless you're, like wanting to upload them to a work account, of course. Um, but we're, when we're talking about personal use, definitely make sure they're going to a personal Gmail, that you're not signed into your work account, your school account, whatever, because uh, then they're going the wrong place. And then you got to transfer them all over and, and it's just, it gets sloppy. So it can be done, but it can get sloppy. So does that answer your question? That's great. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Good question. Okay. So as we're kind of looking around, so we're signed in, we're good to go. You can see this here. We can see all the different things. Just a quick tour. So in the middle here, these are going to be all your pictures and videos. So Google Photos allows you to upload videos and pictures, um, which is great because then you can just quickly, like you can see here, these are videos. This is actually a couple of videos of me and my son last night when we went to the driving range. You know, he was hitting some bombs. And so you can see we now are able to upload the picture or the video there, have the video there right next to it. We have, you know, an image from Saturday that's there too. So we're able to see both pictures and videos that we upload. Those all came directly from my phone. I had them on my phone. I tap the app, they start uploading. It's pretty cool. Um, and we're on the web view right now. Okay. Now other spots in the web view, before we get into the mobile view here in just a second, you can also see that over here in the toolbar, we have photos, we have explore, which explore, what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow you to search through your photos. This is one of the awesome, 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 like awesome times infinity features of Google Photos is that it literally is the smart, one of the smartest programs out there and it scans your pictures in an almost creepy manner. Okay, it is creepy. It knows exactly where you took it if you have GPS tagging turned on on your phone. It knows who's in them if you name them in Google Photos, which we'll get to in a little bit, it knows kind of like what's going on in that picture. So if you look at this and it says things down here, you can see like concerts, dancing, lakes, a ranch, cars. I didn't make that stuff. Google Photos is just looking at my pictures and then grouping all of those images together because they have a common denominator. It's pretty wild. 
Um, same thing with places. Like I did not make these albums. It just knows where I took them because I have that feature turned on in my phone. And then it groups them together for me. Um, like I said, kind of kind of a little creepy, but also super fun and really neat. As far as the pick people go up here, um, I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit, but it also scans for faces and it has artificial intelligence facial recognition. And so every time you upload a picture, it's gonna scan the face and it's gonna locate similar faces to that and then group those images together. So I don't have to go through and tag every picture. Like if you upload a picture to Facebook, it's starting to do that now too, but maybe it doesn't recognize one of the people and you have to tag it individually. What this does, it just does it automatically. Uh, it's a little bit superior firepower to what Facebook has. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so your Explore tool kind of like goes through and, and groups things and makes, allows you to look at it. Sharing. So this is another thing that we're going to get to here in a little while. Sharing a lot is where all of the albums that have been either shared with you um, or people have shared pictures with you. Uh, if you've attended any of my other sessions on any other Google tool, you know, sharing is a big part of Google's uh, ecosystem. And we can share docs, we can share slides, spreadsheets, all of that stuff. You can also share photo albums and you can share individual pictures and videos through Google Photos. Uh, this is really helpful. One of the things, that, uh, as an example, uh, if you have an Android phone and I have an iPhone and I want to send a video to you, uh, if I text it to you, oftentimes that video quality is very poor. When it comes through, it like distorts it. The file, for some reason, does not go through the old uh, data system with, with cell data at all. And it just doesn't convert right. So what I do when I have a friend who has an Android phone and I want to share a video with them is I actually open up Google Photos, upload the video to Photos, and then share it with them through Google Photos. So I'll type in their Gmail account and then share it with them that way. And then it'll populate in their sharing area here that'll allow them then to see that, that video and they could download it to their phone if they wanted to or do whatever. So um, the sharing area is really neat. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to get to that in a lot more detail here, here shortly. One of the other cool things uh, inside of photos is you have a print store. So you can actually order your pictures in a lot of different ways from Google directly. Now, is this the most highest quality print shop out there for photos? Eh, probably not. Is it a way that you can make stuff like really conveniently? Absolutely. Uh, my mother-in-law has actually done this and she made, she just makes photo books from it. I made one as well uh, from one of our trips. It's really slick because you can just go in and you can say photo book from $9.99 here. And then you can go down and you can say, yep, I want to make it in this. And then you can just make a photo book. And then you can start selecting all the pictures that are already uploaded into your Google Photos. And it'll just, boom, create a photo book for you. Or one of the things that's pretty amazing, it groups and makes photo books for you. So if you like just went on a trip or you have some themes, like you can see like they have a year in review theme or the best of spring theme, uh, best of winter 2020. They just grouped all these pictures and you can go in and look at it. And again, I didn't make this, Google made this. And you can be like, wow, that's really cool. I wanna have that book printed. So you can see like here's the different pages of the book and I can adjust and move and edit pictures out, but it's just pretty insane that it, like it does all of this stuff for you. So you can see just some more pictures here. And if I didn't want a photo for whatever reason, I could just tap on it and remove it and, you know, add another one if I wanted to. There's the plus sign up here to add pages to it and add more pictures. So really a cool thing um, that, that Google does for you. So the print store is really neat. You can make, you can uh, have not just photo books, but they also have canvases, prints, they'll print, you know, they'll print them out and they'll send them to you, they'll ship them to you. So it's very much like a Shutterfly um, or Walgreens or CVS, uh, but it's just very convenient to do. Uh, in that same vein, I'm going to take one slight detour. Uh, when you get all your pictures uploaded, you can in some most of those platforms. So if you're used to using Shutterfly or you're used to using Walgreens or CVS um, for printing your pictures and picking them up, there is in those programs or those platforms. So when you go to walgreens.com or shutterfly.com and you log in, you can connect your Google Photos account to your Shutterfly account. And so then you can just pull in the pictures from your Google Photos directly into those accounts and have them make the prints for you. So I know Shutterfly gives away a lot of free stuff, you know, freebies with, you know, different image sizes and things like that. And so I take advantage of that. And I go in and I grab the pictures that I want. Uh, and then I print them on Shutterfly and they ship them right to my house. So, you know, I don't have to download, upload, anything like that. It's just 
connecting the two systems. Again, just another convenience of Google Photos and getting pictures to places that you want them to be. Okay, continuing with our tour of the web interface here. You have your library over here too. So library allows you to look at any images that you've favored, okay? So if you've made an image a favorite, um, you know, so I can click on this, I can see a star up here. And if I click on that and I make it a favorite, then I go back and if I click on the library here of favorites, it's gonna show any of the pictures that I have made a favorite. So this helps because when you start creating, I don't do it often as you can see there, but like when you start creating a lot or you start having a lot of pictures in your library or uploading lots of images, uh, you might want one that you go back to over and over and over again. And it's a process of trying to find it through all of your thousands of pictures can be difficult. Uh, and so if you make it a favorite, then it's easy for you to just click on the favorite, go in, see the video here. So like, this is when I dumped my boat uh, at the dump. And, uh, you know, I like to show people that because it's like, that's what it looks like when you just push a boat off a trailer at a dump uh, and then have a bulldozer just push it into a giant pile of garbage because uh, that was a pretty unique experience. So <laughs> it's just kind of something that's pretty cool. I make it a favorite because then I don't have to go back digging through to find it uh, anywhere uh, in there. So, so that's what your favorites are. Your albums we're going to talk about here in a little bit are all listed here. Um, utilities. Uh, this is going to be a, another one of those places where you're going to go and you're going to go this is a crazy place because what this will do is this is going to show you uh, some different things. So you have these different, what are called cards on here. And these cards are going to be different features that Google Photos has. So these are automatic features that Google just creates and does uh, for you. You don't have to ask for them, it just makes it happen. So for example, you have an assistant here. The assistant is gonna say, these pictures look like they need to be rotated because they were sideways when they got uploaded. So then you can go in, you can review those suggestions and then it'll say, oh yeah, look at, you wanna flip these. So you can see like, this is clearly like upside down. So if I click on that, now I can flip it around and make it to where it needs to be. And then I can save it and then it would be fine. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing uh, that, that you can do. The other thing that's neat is that it just automatically creates things for you. like. These movies, A Year of Smiles. It just scanned a whole bunch of pictures and saw us smiling, and then it put it into a video with music in the background. Um, and then you can download those and add them to your Google Photos. And then you just have this video of like all these pictures of you smiling or your family smiling or other people that you have in the image smiling. And then when thinking about that, I'm thinking about maybe going on vacations and um, or having a partner, like maybe your, your wife or your husband. Um, yeah. I know that you can absolutely share albums, but is there ever any uh, interest or a suggestion about syncing um, the uploads so that it would up automatically upload to other people's um, or your or yours as well? So they know that things have been uploaded so they could go and steal photos if they wanted to, I guess. Um, I actually am going to get to that. That is something that is absolutely something you can do. And one of the most amazing parts. However, I will say you want to be careful in your settings when you do that, because I have been bit by that, especially with their new capping of storage size. Um, so yeah, so we're going to get to that in just a, just a, just a minute when we talk about sharing. Uh, Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you can see in utilities here, this is going to create those, like, here's just a video of, of selfies. I'll be, be honest, the one that gets me every time, uh, they do one about once a, every couple of months, it seems like, and they title it, they grow up so fast. And they just like take pictures of my kid and put it behind like kind of like sappy music and it like makes me cry. Um, you know, and like they just, it's like, there's no reason for that. Like you didn't need to do that to me, Google. Like I didn't need to like have like a quick tear to see my kid like, you know, grow up. But like, and I can only imagine that's going to get worse, like as he continues to get bigger. But like, yeah, they'll just do that to you too. So, and, but then you're like, that's so cute. I got to save it. And you don't, it don't cost any money. Like you just, like if I wanted that here, I just hit save and then it just saves into my photos uh, as a video then. So very cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, so your utilities are, are there. So and then you have your archive and your trash. This is just if you have duplicates and you dump them, they're in there and you can delete them. So, all right, so let's get into some of the sharing stuff. Uh, and well, I guess first we should start with like, how do you even upload pictures and, and all of that? That would be probably a, a better place to go. And then we can talk about sharing. So I'm gonna show you, uh, this is the app, okay? So this is what it looks like when I open up the Google Photos app. So you can see here on my, just my iPhone here, I tap on Google Photos. 
Um, if you do this the first time, it'll ask you to sign in. That's when you sign in with your Google account. Uh, and then you will be prompted to uh, sync your photos. So what it'll do is it'll connect to your current existing photos. So if I go to my regular photos on my phone, you can see here's all of my pictures on my phone. And what it does is it connects between those two. So it connects between those two apps and it takes all of my pictures from my phone and then processes them and uploads them to the internet. So for example, if I take a selfie right now, and then I go into my Google Photos, you see that picture there is currently there. And then there's that little white circle with the up arrow going around it. And then also up here, there's the up arrow. And that means that it's currently in process. So that means it's currently uploading that picture. And you can see now when it's green, that means that everything has been uploaded. So if I go back to my web interface here, click on this, do a quick refresh, even though I don't even need to really refresh, it would disappear, but I'm impatient. There's the selfie. So now I have it on my computer and on my phone. So that's the, that's the really cool thing. It's just like, as soon as you take that picture and you open up Google photos, it uploads, uh, which is really slick. You can set it up in your settings that if you would like, and you go into your, your settings, you can say, I want this to be uh, only done on Go to backup and sync. You can see backup and sync there. And then down at the bottom here, it'll say use cell data to backup photos, use cell data to backup videos. I have those both turned on because I have unlimited data on my plan. If you are one that does not have unlimited data, what I would suggest is to slide those off. And then when you get connected to Wi Fi, open up the Photos app, and then all of your pictures will upload through your wireless connection. Um, which is going to save you then on your data plan for your phone. So just be aware of that. That's something, again, you would want to go into when you open up photos, tap on your picture up in the top corner here of the app. And then you'll see Google Photos settings down here. Tap that. And then you'll have backup and sync. And then you'll have these two down here on under when to backup. And that's going to be uh, if you have unlimited data, then it won't matter. Like, I just let it go because I don't I don't mind because I'm not getting charged for it. But like my wife is getting it gets charged by the gig for her data plan. And so we have those slid off. So her pictures only upload when she opens up Google Photos uh, and you have to open up photos when you're connected to Wi-Fi. Boom. Then they uh, all upload uh, automatically. So just a really nice uh, option there to be aware of. Um, OK, so these are all the pictures that I have. So let's get to Kelsey's question about sharing. Okay, so we can share albums. That's one of the really cool things that we can do. But before we get into sharing albums, there's actually a setting in here. If you go back into our Google Photos settings, where if we look at this, you'll notice there's gonna be an option scrolling down where it says sharing and then partner sharing. Okay, and so partner sharing, when I tap on that, this is gonna be where you can enter in uh, another user. Okay, so in this case, I have my wife and we share photos. Now here is the key. Um, you can set this up to either share all photos. So every picture she takes, I see. Every picture I take, she, she sees. And they all go into our, our libraries. So you can do that. And I actually did that. The problem is, is that I had that set up when Google Photos was unlimited storage. And now they have a cap on your storage. So it was unlimited up until about three months ago. And then they capped it at whatever storage plan your Google account has, which for most users is going to be 15 gig of storage, which is a ton of storage until you start uploading a lot of photos and videos. Then it becomes less storage. <laughs> it fills up pretty quick. So I'm at 13 gig right now, actually 14 gig as I look at the computer right now. I realized that we had set up partner sharing and unfortunately, we had set up right here where it says Rose can access and photos from Rose here that I can access. We had this set up to all, which means that our photos were actually being duplicated. And so I had every picture that she was taking, like showing up in my account. And so did she, which meant our date or our storage space like skyrocketed because like I was getting all these pictures that I didn't need and to take and they were showing up in my account. So what we did, and this is where it gets really neat, though is that where it says Rose can access, if I tap on that, 
I now say it says photos of one selected face. And I think I might have to change this on my computer now that I'm looking at it. Let's see. Nope, there it is. I just tap on that. And then all the faces of the people that I've named show up. And I select writer because I want to see the pictures that she takes of him. And she wants to see the pictures that I take of him because we kind of like our kid. So like you can just set that up. Now I could say like also like my dad. So like I could tap on my dad and then any picture that either I take of my dad or she takes of my dad would show up on either one of our libraries. Okay. But we just want to keep it here. This, But you can see, you can select multiple faces in this, in this area here. So I hit done. You can see that it is set up here. Then also down here where it says photos from rows, I have selected one face. If I tap on that, that's also going to be writer. So we both are seeing just pictures of, of writer. Now what that looks like, if I go all the way back out and I go up to this little chat bubble up here, okay, that's actually going to be now where it says sharing. And you'll notice it says roses, photos, new photos. If I tap on that, that's going to show all the pictures that she's taken of writer. So I didn't, you know, I wasn't at home. This was when I was out fishing on Saturday and my, my best friend's daughter was over and they were coloring. So she took that picture and then I was able to see it because I have it also set up up here at the top. You'll notice where it says saving automatically. I have it set then to save those pictures into my regular Google photos. So you can see that picture is actually going to be right here in my normal Google photos album. So again, I'll go through that process again, because I know people are probably wondering if you're watching this, like, how did he do that again? So in your photos, tap on the picture in the top right hand corner of the screen. So that's going to go into your settings area down here where it says Google Photos settings, tap that. Now you're going to scroll up just a little bit here and you're going to go to sharing and it should say partner sharing here. You'll tap on that and then it'll say shared with and you might have to have you know a, a you know add a partner or something like that and when you do that you'll just have to go uh in there and you can see i can't do it now because i've already got it set up now i believe you're only able to share with one partner uh and that's it i did wish i could set this up with like my mom because my mom watches my son a couple of days a week and my mother-in-law and they take a lot of photos and so it'd be cool if, if i could do the same thing with them you, I think Google like, should be or, listening because I agree. I think it should be would be great. I think you used to be able to, and then it like stopped, and I was confused why I wasn't getting pictures anymore. And then, yeah, and only one. But yeah, why not? Just give us more. Like you know, I don't know. I don't get it. But maybe I'll write them a strongly worded handwritten letter uh, expressing my displeasure with their free product. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll take it into consideration. Um, so yeah, so that's how you set up partner sharing. It's really cool. You can set up lots of different things, but again, I think it's important to make sure you only select um, down here the photos that of specific people. Like you want to make sure it's just set up for a couple because, like I said, if you get those duplications, it'll just start flooding your Google Photos with a lot of pictures and it'll blow up your storage really, really quickly. So just be uh, just be aware of, of that. All right, so let's look at a couple of other things here um, as we're kind of scrolling through. So like when we're talking about uh, sharing, sharing pictures, um, photo albums is, is Google photo albums is where it's, it's like, this is where one of the other like blockbuster features of this. Um, what you wanna do is when you start taking pictures. So I've got a series of pictures here from the fishing tournament that my uh, friends and I ran uh, on the weekend. And uh, I've got pictures from my drone. I've got pictures that I took like they're there's just a lot of different pictures kind of all in the same album. And I want to maybe share these uh, with my buddies and, uh, you know, make so that way they have them. So what you're going to be able to do is in from your phone and you can do this from your computer as well, like either one, um, you can just select. So if you just press and hold on one of the pictures, you press and hold on it, you'll see you get the little checkbox that comes up. And then from there, you can check the boxes on the pictures that you want to share in an album. So I've got all of my pictures selected uh, that I wanna go ahead and share with my friends on this. So when I have that all selected up here, there's a couple of options I can select, but the one I'm gonna focus on is the plus sign. 
up at the top. Okay, the plus sign, what that's gonna do is bring up a create option for me. Okay, and this is something that's really neat about Google Photos is that you can create more than just albums. Like we're gonna get into these other things here in a little bit, but I wanna create an album right now. You see there is shared album, like you could go that route right away. It, it doesn't really matter one way or the other. Uh, I'm gonna tap just album. And then it comes up, say you wanna add a title. So we can title this called Legends of the Rock. And then just hit the check mark up in the top left corner of the screen. And then now I have my album. And if I go over into the web interface here and just go to albums, there it is. Just that fast. Like it communicates back and forth and it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive stuff. So I have my album on my phone and then now I wanna share this with my friends so that way they can see all the pictures i tap the share button in the middle and then i would find either their names here um, or i can share to create link and then i can text it to them i can email it to them i can do pretty much anything i want down there with it if i tap this little plus sign again you can see They'll pop up if you don't see their names here and you want to type their email addresses in you're actually going to hit this little search button right there. And that's going to now bring up all of their names, uh, all the people that you've like shared something recently with or your phone contacts as well, or you type in their name if they have an email account a Gmail account that you've already used so you can see like here's Dustin's he was the one that organized the event, I can do that tap that and then that would come in or you could just type in their gmail accounts and then send it that way okay so so that's where you're going to probably do a lot of and it's a little bit it's not very intuitive like you have to hit this little search thing down here but again it's what we're given so that's what we have to do so you tap that type in their name their phone number their email whatever way you can find them and then that's going to share that album with them here's why this is really cool uh, one, now they have access to all these pictures. So it pops up in their Google Photos, they're able to look at them. The other thing that's really cool about this is that they become an editor on the photo album. And so if they've also taken pictures at that event, they can add them to this album. And so then you have access to all their pictures from the event as well. I'll show you an example. And this time I'm just gonna go to the uh, computer here because it's a little easier to see. So for example, our Disney trip. So we went to Disney in December of last year and we made an album of all the pictures from our trip to Disney. But we added my parents, so there's my mom, my dad, my, uh, my, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law. I added all of them to the album. They didn't go on the trip with us, but they added the album to their account. And then as we were taking pictures and I was adding them to this album, they were able to follow our trip from home. So they could see all the pictures. I didn't have to text them a million pictures a day being like, hey, look what we did. They just had to open up Google Photos and they would see all the pictures that we would add in. The other thing is my wife is also in here. So as she took pictures, she could add them to the album and then I can see them and she can see them. So before we set up that partner sharing where it was just pictures of my son, now it's pick any picture that we take. So you can see who took them by the name that's at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So you can see here, there's like a picture of, well, most of them are gonna have Ryder in there, but like Rose took this picture of me at the um, Raglan Road uh, restaurant. So I didn't take this photo, but she did, but now it's in that album that I can see it and my parents can see it. So it's really cool, like that you can just have this whole community of pictures being taken and uploaded into one place that people that are with you or people that are not with you can all see and access in real time. Um, really, really cool stuff. Uh, great for family vacations as well. So as another example, uh, when we went to Disney, we go to Disney a lot, um, <laughs> in 2019, when we went to Disney, same thing, we shared this album with everybody. Uh, my sister and brother-in-law also came on this trip and they were able to add pictures. So like, here's a picture that my mom took, it went in there. So it's no longer like, hey, here's the flash drive with all the pictures we took from Disney, or here's this whole photo album, like physical photo album. 
of all the pictures. It's just there. And if you want to print them out, you can, but if you don't want to print them out, they're just accessible here. Um, it's just amazing to be able to, to do this and to share and to, you know, share experiences um, and not be like, hey, did you take a picture? Like, send that to me, text it to me. And then you got to figure out how to download it from your phone and all that stuff or from your messages and get it to show up. Don't worry about any of that. It's all done for you. Um, so again, very, very, very slick. Um, I'll show it one more time here. So you create that album by pressing and holding on any of the pictures that you want. So I do a different one this time. So we'll just do these pictures from the golf course or from the driving range. Hit the plus sign at the top. Album, title it. Hit share. Magnifying glass. And then type in the name of the person you want to share that with. So just a really neat way of, of, of going about and, you know, making sure people have these pictures for as long as they want. Um, in a similar vein with sharing pictures, as I mentioned, the whole Android to iPhone, like video sending thing that doesn't work. So if I wanted to send this picture or this video to somebody, you can do that without having to create it and put it into an album. You can open up the video after it uploads. And then you can see down in the bottom left corner of the screen, there's this box, I'm just gonna move that out of the way. There's this box with an arrow that we lovingly call the share row. It's a box with an arrow, it's a share row. And so you're going to share by tapping that. And then you'll notice it's the same like options that we had when we were sharing the album. And so this happened to me just the other day. I had a former student that I played golf with. We took a picture, we took a video together. I couldn't get it to him. It, didn't go through via text. So I just opened up photos, typed in, did the search, typed in his email address that he gave me, boom, sent it off. He had it on his phone in under a minute, which was pretty cool. So again, sharing pictures and, and videos is very straightforward through this as well, where you can do it this way and then they're in their Google photos. Super cool stuff. Whew, that was a lot. So we've uh, we've covered our sharing, uh, our vote our album creation um i want to get back into a little bit of the kind of nuts and bolts of this too because there's some of those like kind of really neat features uh that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet like with the search capabilities of this so i mentioned them when we talked about the explore area over here now you'll notice on your phone when you open it up you don't have quite you have photos photos but then you have library and search down here. You have explorer sharing and all of that. So sharing over here is actually this little box up here. Okay, so it's just a couple of minor differences between the web view and the app view. Um, but as far as the whole facial recognition thing and how that works, and this is one thing where when I show this to people, I, I kind of lose them for a little bit because they get addicted into tagging faces in that process, which I totally understand because it is really cool. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do it uh, both on the web and on your on your phone. We'll start on the phone. So on the phone, to do this, we're going to go to the search option here. And then you'll come up and you'll see right at the top where it says search your photos. It'll have people and pets. And this is where Google Photos is, again, mind-blowing, is it recognizes your pet's faces. It's not just people. You got a pet you take a lot of pictures of, you can name your pet in Google Photos, and it'll just find all the pictures of that pet just that path. It's insane. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to tap on that where it says view all. Okay. So that's important because it, I've already got a bunch of names in here. So we're going to do that view all. And then now it's going to come up with all of these different people. Okay. So it's now up to me to go through and find. So you can see I've named all of these people already. It didn't know their names. At least we went that far. So I have to scroll down pretty far, but I laughed when I was previewing this because it also recognized Piglet. So Piglet made the, the pictures <laughs> on my phone, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, the dog is Coda. So again, we're recognizing individual pets. So we'll name Coda here. So we can tap on the picture of Coda. And it's not great with this, like it brought up a fawn. Um, that's definitely not the dog. Uh, it also brought up this stuffed deer, but it was pretty close down here. You can see like it found all of these other pictures of Coda. And so now what I can do is go up and at the top, it'll say, add a name. So I tap on that. And then I type in the name, Coda, done. And now 
if I go back, go back one more time, and then where it goes it says search your photos, if I type in Coda, it's going to bring up that view of all of those different pictures of Coda. And it's a dog. Like, that's, that's really pretty cool. Now, I don't have a whole lot of pictures of Shiba Inus, so it's like can't get confusing, but um, I can do another one of the dog and my dog was Crash. And it brings up all the pictures of my dog. And it's pretty cool because my dog, he died like three years ago. And so it's kind of neat. I can just find all the little pictures of, of Crash and I didn't have to go through and tag him. It found him automatically. Now, more importantly, when we look at this, we want to look at faces of humans too. So you can see it's finding all the different pictures and to find one of those faces, like this is Carson. So I'll tap on him. We'll add the name. This is Carson. Whirly, done. And you can see all the pictures now of Carson show up. And what is somewhat or very creepy, depending on how you want to look at it, cool or creepy, if I find those pictures of Ryder, if I go all the way down, it's tracking him all the way to his newborn pictures. So everything from literally the time when he was about three minutes old here in these pictures up to yesterday when we were at the driving range. It knows it's him. It evolves with him. It like recognizes his growth, which is really just mind blowing that we have technology that does that. Um, you know, and it, it's really neat. Now you will get some options where you notice if I go back into that view all where it says same or different person. You'll get that from time to time and it's really cool because then that's just teaching the teaching the computer like who's who and you can say yes that's the same um that's actually so this is also wild that is me when I, I was like three months old and this is me when i was two and it like thinks that i'm the same person and i am the same person so that's good but again just another like one of those things where it's wild right and so like this isn't the same person though that is not my son that's a different baby so i put different and now it's up to date so when you're tagging faces, um, it's really a cool thing. Now it is also not just faces. If I go back over into the web browser here, you can also search your photos for locations, inanimate objects, themes, places, all different things like that. So if I type in lake, it finds all the pictures that looks like it has a lake in it. Pretty cool. And if you notice this one, this one has some water in the background, but it also has the word Green Lake in it. So it's scanning the image for text as well as uh, the place. So like there is water in the background there, but it has lake in the words. So that's why it more than likely popped up with lake. Um, really crazy. Also, as far as like inanimate objects go, um, if you type in say, or themes, like if I type in baseball, It's gonna bring up all these pictures of baseball or a video with baseball that has in the text. This one is a picture of my friends that were all college roommates, but again, my buddy's shirt says baseball on it. So it brought up the baseball. Uh, it is it is mind, it is just, it, I, I talk about this all the time. I use this all the time. It still never ceases to amaze me how neat it is uh, that you can do all these things. Um, so the search bar is just really cool. The other thing is if you go over to the right hand side of either the app or the web interface, everything is sorted by date that the picture was taken. Um, so you can go all the way back in time. So if I go all the way back to uh, 2015, October of 2015, you can see that over here, that was my wedding. So I know that if I go back over there, I can see pictures from my wedding because that was the big event of October 2015 was our wedding. If I know that and something happened in September of 2019, I can kind of just guess, right? Like you can just kind of scroll through and you can see like, okay, it was right around there that we went to Disney. So again, you can kind of use this over here to gauge like when that happened. So like I have a general idea of when it happened, but I don't know exactly what day you'll go and you can see at the top of each day, you have the date and the location of where those pictures were taken. Now the mobile app, actually goes even further on that now or if you look and you go back to a month 
when we scroll down, so if we go to, you can see June, so let's see, I think it's better. Yeah, here we go. So it's now got an option, and this is like new as in the last couple of weeks, like I saw this on the update. It's got the best of that month. So it just picks like your best highlights of that month, and then when you tap on it, it just brings up a little slideshow of all, all of your highlights from that particular month in no particular order which is pretty cool, <laughs> you know, that you can see kind of those, those things. You can see like we go up to April here, here's the best of April. And so this is just on the mobile app. That hasn't integrated its way into the um, web uh, yet, but probably someday it will, I imagine. But again, very cool stuff as far as like seeing memories, seeing things happening in, in different ways. So, so you have lots of different things that are really cool in this as far as like searching back through your memories, searching back through uh, you know, your pictures, faces, people, themes, events, all that type of good stuff. Really cool, really neat things. Um, the other thing that I will say about this, though, is that here's, a, here's another example uh, of this. So I have a picture. It was actually a screenshot, and it's on my computer. So this picture I took, and I'm going to move my window over a little bit. So I've got it saved on my desktop. And so this is important because a lot of you probably have pictures on your computers that you want to back up to your Google Photos. So there's a couple ways you can do that. One of them is if you have them in a folder or you have them on you know, your desktop or you open up your, your My you know, Documents or your My Pictures uh, in your, from your My Computer, you can drag and drop them into Google Photos. So for example, this is a picture uh, that I took and it's got... Uh, it's just my dad holding my little niece uh, on his last day of work because he just retired last week. And so I want that picture in my Google Photos. So I just drag it, drop it, and now it uploads. If I go all the way back up to the top. That picture will be there. And it outsmarted me because it had a date on it. So it probably added it to the right date already. Let's see. Yeah, it did. Darn it. I can't even out trick it because I have, I'm going to have to go back to June 30th when I took that picture and it's going to be there. See what happens when you try to trick Google Photos. It's just too, too intelligent now. Um, there it is on July 1st because that's when I took that screenshot. It's too smart. It knows. Um, the point of what I was saying in that is if you upload something, so that's actually actually not a bad idea because like I didn't actually this photo wasn't actually taken on July 1st. It was taken on June 27th, which was his last day. Um, but because I took the screenshot on July 1, it thinks it's going to July 1. So I need to fix the date because this is what happens like, you know, like you upload a lot of pictures. Maybe the date's not correct on them and you want it to actually fall correctly in your timeline. You can fix that. OK, so when you open up the picture, click on the eye. And then you can see in the details here, it says July 1 at 8.47 a.m. Edit that and change that to 06.27. Save. And then now if we back out of this, you can see that that's on, oh, that wasn't the right date either, but close enough. Sunday the 27th, that might have been it's another day. Getting my days confused. Um, but you can see, click on it, now that date has been updated. So it's moved itself around in your photos. Um, this is important if you are uploading like lots of pictures that maybe don't have the right timestamp on them. So as an example, my mom, I mentioned her earlier, she's got all of those different pictures from uh, you know forever. So she's been scanning them into her computer and then uploading them into Google Photos. So that way they're not just a physical copy, they're also a digital copy of them. Totally something you can do. Um, so it's just really neat. Uh, way you can do that. You can also set in your settings on your computer. If you go into settings and you go into, let's see, maybe it's not, maybe it's just an upload. Might be a little different. Let's see, upload from. So this is one way you can go, upload from your computer, but there is a way. I think you have to use that. So they've changed it. You have to use this download backup and sync. But if you do this and you open up download, if you download what's called Google's backup and sync, it'll scan your computer for all of your picture files. And then automatically, like while you're sleeping, it'll just run in the background and it'll find all your pictures and put them into Google Photos for you. 
So as my mom is scanning the pictures into her computer, Google's running in the background and uploading them automatically into Google Photos for her, uh, which is really cool uh, and something that's pretty neat. So as a pretty neat example of this, she was looking for pictures of uh, my uncle had made a uh, wooden car, which I thought she shared with me through Google Photos, uh, but it doesn't look like it's coming up in here. I might have removed the album because I didn't really need it in here. Uh, yeah, must have. But anyways, she was finding pictures in her Google Photos, shared them over with me so I could see them that were scanned images, which was pretty, pretty cool. Um, pretty cool stuff. Oh, I know an example. If I go into sharing, I saw this earlier. Um, I got, I needed uh, pictures from when I was playing baseball in high school. So this is the Ben baseball uh, pictures that she created and she scanned all these pictures in. There's Ben Sangroth from high school days um, and uploaded them into a Google photo album for me and shared them with me. So just a really cool way that you can take those pictures that you have printed out at home, get them into your computer uh, and go. Um, all right, quickly, because we're about out of time, just want to show you one last thing. Uh, you can create some really neat stuff with Google Photos too. We talked about the albums, but the other thing that we can do is if we go up here, uh, let's do this. You can do it from either the mobile app or the web. Well, let's just do the phone. So here, if we have some pictures or we have a series of events. So this is when we met my baby niece for the first time. So I'm gonna grab, just press in holding on some of these pictures. So I've got these pictures. Now we're gonna hit that plus sign again. And then you'll notice you can create a movie or a collage or an animation on these pictures. So the collage, pretty cool, just tap collage. And then it automatically creates a photo collage for you. Now, the thing I don't love about this is you can't adjust the pictures. So like this picture doesn't work because the whole point of this picture was Ryder was like holding his finger out and the little baby was grabbing the finger. And it's a bummer because the Google didn't know that. So it didn't put it in there. And I can't move it, like adjust it. So it is what it is. It's it's free. So you kind of, you know, again, you go with what it is. Now, the other thing with this, though, that we can do is if I tap on these again. If I hit that plus sign and I go movie, what it's going to do is put all the pictures in together. And then now add music to it and I can adjust like how long each picture is up by like, these little sliders. I can adjust the music by tapping on there. You can see I have some music options and then when I hit play it'll just kind of create this own little movie for me. You don't have to know how to use like Movie Maker or anything like that. Just use Google Photos. Add some music to the background if we hit save on that. It takes just a couple of seconds. And because I have my phone plugged into my computer, you can't hear the music, but I promise there's music in the background of this uh, when you do it, but it's all because of the way I have, I'm presenting today. And that's the way you can make a movie, like in Google Photos, a picture slideshow, like just a couple of taps and it makes the video. And if we went all the way back up to the top. With, the fun thing is if you're hanging out with family, you could actually put it up on your TV screen um, and do. Yeah. Google Cast, so you could, Chromecast, you could put it up there and people could watch it. Absolutely, yeah. That's what we do that on vacation pictures all the time. Like all the time. Like, hey, let's look at our pictures because everybody wants to see everybody's vacation photos. And so, you know, yeah, nothing better than just casting it up to your TV or mirroring it up to your TV, depending on what you have. So, um, so yeah, so lots of ways you can create. Uh, the last one more thing and then I'm done, I promise. Up at the top, this is only in the mobile app. This is where they actually create like on this day highlights. So if you have a Facebook account, you know, there's memories. Google photos does this to like the 10th degree um, where you can see like, okay, what was I doing three years ago? Like me and my little buddy were out playing baseball in the yard and you can just tap through them. We're getting ready to go up to Minnesota. Hey, this is in Minnesota. Look at this. Yeah. This is up in the, uh, up the lake in Minnesota. Um, so like we were up in Minnesota on uh, three years ago today, we were there. So like, it's kind of cool because then it goes and then this is five years ago. 
So this was, you know, we were down, you know, it's just really a neat play. Like here's eight years ago, you know, it just brings up different pictures and videos and things that happened and, you know, makes you remember what time was like back then without having to scan through it. Just, there's no rhyme or reason for why it grabs the pictures. It just does. And uh, it's just really neat and, and stuff. So, um, and it also does these little like spotlights too. So like, you know, as like, just for whatever reason, it grouped my wife and her sister together. So you can tap on that and then you can see the pictures of them together. And uh, here's one with recent highlights. So just really cool. Again, just something that's really super neat with, with Google Photos. So I think we covered my list uh, of all Google Photos <laughs> things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's Google Photos. It's awesome. That's awesome, Ben. And I know that there's always extra to learn. So we continuously have opportunities to say, oh, that's great, but maybe I needed a little extra something. So if you watch this video and you're like, you know, that was great, taught me some great tips, but I actually am um, looking to use it in a certain way, give us a holler and we'll see about uh, level two. Uh, and on that note, I have a quick question for you. I'm looking to download some photos off of Google because, you know, the nice thing about storing them there is you can use them for different things and pull them. Um, if I wanted to resize them, is there any way to, to resize the photos? Because they're pretty good quality when they come off of um, what they've been saved on Google. Yeah. Um, so the photo resizing thing is is a bit uh, it's a bit tricky. So like that is something that's a little bit difficult. So like what I do in that case, if I need to resize it, I actually just have to go to a generic like photo resizer on the internet to do that. Like I I don't have a specific one that I I can recommend, but I just often I'll just Google like hey you know you know, resize my image or something like that on, on the interwebs, unfortunately, because yeah, it's, it is one thing where like you take the picture and you upload it and they're in a quality that might be too big for a particular, you know, place that you're trying to put it. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's one of those ones where you have to resize it and you have to use a different program to be able to do it. There's no like clean way to do it in Google, unfortunately. Um, speaking of the size though, there is an option in here though, when you go into your settings, um, if you do upload, choose your upload size to be either original quality or storage saver. Um, if you choose storage saver, that will um, decrease the quality of photo slightly, uh, but then allow it to be just a little bit smaller. And so it doesn't take up as much space when you're uploading them. So you can upload more pictures without having to pay for Google Plus uh, or for the Google premium storage space. Uh, and then it might be a little bit easier for when you when you download them. So it'll de there's just a little difference in the quality when you print them, but I not super significant. I print out quite a few, and I even stretch them out to like 16 by 20 canvases uh, from here, and you can't tell. Like at least to my eye, I'm not a professional photographer, but to my eye, you can't tell. So that would be my one little tip is to just make sure you're selected at storage saver. Uh, so then when you do upload them, it will shrink them down. Just just make them a little bit easier to manage. And then I wonder, hey, trash and, and my email deletes after every 30 days. Does mm -hmm. that thing happen for photos and the trash? Yep, yep. So you can, uh, there's 60 days here. Um, and so like I have been going through and like removing stuff like screenshots that I take on my phone. Like I don't need this fantasy football score, even though it was like a really terrible loss when I lost by under a point. Um, but I don't, I don't care about that. Like, you know, and these pictures of this broken drone and, you know, this windshield card thing, like I don't need them anymore and they're just taking up space. So I, I go through and then, yeah, it, it eliminates it after 60 days. Um, you know, so that way, or you can just go in and if I delete it right now. And then um, with that note in mind, maybe that people want to archive if they aren't really sure that they want to necessarily throw in the trash, but they just want to clean up, clean house for a bit. Maybe that's a tool. Yeah, so you can uh, click on your three dots up in the top right corner. So like, I don't necessarily need this selfie to show up uh, in my uh, photos album here. And so I can click on the three dots, archive it. So again, that's going to remove it from my view of my main albums. But yeah, I didn't delete it. So like, it's still going to hang out in the archive uh, when I click on that. And that's going to show you all the photos that you archived and there's actually some in here that I can probably get rid of because I don't need all of those either um so you know yeah doesn't delete them they're still there uh but if you wanted to uh clean up it's basically a good way to clean house without deleting your pictures and for those that might be new to google uh, photos 
you know, they might be concerned that they would fill up their, uh, their quantity of photos very quickly. Uh, any concept of how long it took for you to get the storage that you have filled up where you're at? Um, so if I look at this and I was, I'm trying to figure this out a little bit myself, actually. So there is a way, uh, manage storage, there we go. So you can see a lot of my storage uh, comes from Google Drive and then part like not a lot from Google Photos. This is a little bit because I was a very early adopter of Google Photos and I think I'm getting a little bit, um, I'm getting a little bit punished for that because you used to have to upload your photos to Google Drive and then that was where Google Photos pulled all your photos from. And so I have a lot of pictures in Google Drive and I have a lot of pictures in Google Photos, but they're separate. And but like I, I don't know how they're still interconnected and intertwined on the back end. Um, and so I would say this has taken me to get to 14 gig. Uh, it is probably I don't know thousands of pictures. Like there are literally thousands of pictures on there. Um, Hey, that videos. People, like when they're looking at that, like 199 or yeah, below monthly. Yeah, you, know, you, you could pay that in the long run, but it's going to take you a while to get to having a need to have to do that. It, like it really months. is like I and that's when like, again, if you want to come back for like Google Photos hacks, like 2.0, 3.0, I'll show you how you just open up another Google account and then you start sharing like pictures from different like perspectives. Like I, like I said earlier, I have this whole um, golf uh, account that I set up just for uh, my golf pictures uh, to come in and you know I don't know now it's making me log in but like I just upload you don't quite need to see your passwords for that but yeah no I, I do think it's a good point and I just think people shouldn't be too afraid that they're gonna fill it yeah. up with their videos it's not one of those things where it's like oh my gosh now I would suggest here's something to to suggest when you're uploading videos um, don't up like try to find different avenues to upload like 25, 30 minute long videos. Um, you know, one of the things that that I've started doing is taking those videos that are 20, 25 minute home movies. I actually upload them to YouTube uh, and just make them unlisted and private. Um, so, for example, like I film every year Christmas um, and while kids opening up Christmas gifts will get you thousands, if not millions of views on YouTube sometimes because kids just like to watch other kids open up presents. Um, I wasn't really interested in doing that uh, for our, our Christmas. So I uploaded it to YouTube because uh, YouTube has no storage cap and uh, just made it private and then uh, removed it from my Google Photos. So that cleared up a ton of space, you know? So again, there's like little hacks that you can do to like eliminate like a lot of those bigger video files. Um, YouTube's your best friend for that. Um, you know, so if you're savvy enough to kind of, which it's not hard to, to do that, but it does take, it's something that not a lot of people do, um, often. So, um, so that's one of the suggestions is, is avoid the, the longer videos. The other thing is if you have like Instagram and like I have set up for Instagram that every story I take, uh, saves the video to my phone. Well, then that video then uploads to Google photos. Um, so if I'm taking boomerangs or stuff like that, it comes in as a video file. And if they're just little silly stuff, like I don't need a boomerang of like, I don't know, whatever I'm doing, like forever. Like it was a glimpse in time. Like that's, I don't need it. I just remove it because then if you have like lots of little videos, those will eventually add up space too. So just something to be considering is like what the little smaller video clips, um, they will add up to for, for your storage. But yeah, it's going to take most people a long time to fill it up. Um, uh, if you are going to be one of those people like my mom that scans the images in, um, I had her set up a separate Google account that's not plugged into her phone. Like it's just like she just set up a new Google account and that was the one that she put all of her old pictures into. Um, you know, like we didn't mess with the one that she was signed into her phone on anything like that because she has thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures that she's scanning in. And so she's just putting them all into this one account, you know, and then she has access to it if she needs it, but it just, you know, it cleans up, makes her experience a lot cleaner too. So that's another little hack. Wonderful. Well, it's so great to have you got back again, Ben, and um, we have to talk through what maybe the next one might be. Thank yeah. you for watching. And if you have questions or suggestions for other ones, let us know for the future. Thanks for watching.